Hello, everyone. Today, our group is going to discuss Lord Robert Cecil, who became the Lord Marquis of Salisbury after his brother's untimely death. He was also known as Lord Salisbury. Born in 1830, he was the fifth of six children and was often described as being tall, thin, and shy. To most individuals outside of his family, he was aloof and courteous. He was a deeply religious person and kept that faith his entire life. In his biographies, it is stated that his wife often feared for his mental state. He was severely depressed at times and he was given to sleepwalking. The couple married in 1857 and had eight children. While his income was modest, he had a family to look after and turned to journalism to supplement his income. Journalism allowed the future Lord Salisbury to elaborate upon and refine his political ideals. He believed that established institutions and arrangements should further the stability, security, and prosperity of the society it serves for the greatest happiness for the greatest number. As a conservative politician, his views helped to define politics in the Victorian era, as well as maintain his long political career, which ranged from foreign office to Prime Minister. Lord Salisbury seemed to think democracy an unfit form of government because it only operated with a full faith and integrity when things were going well. It relied too heavily on the good nature of man. No man was free from evil passion or blind selfishness. Government is a defensive and remedial institution. Its function is to maintain order and avert internal conflict, and it only succeeds when it does so. In the mind of Lord Salisbury, the Civil War was proof that the American experiment was a failure. As a star supporter of the Confederacy, Salisbury saw the conflict as the hatred between two parties is too deep, deadly for reconciliation, and warlike power is too nearly balanced for permanent conquest. The Southern states must form an independent nation. The North is fighting for no sentimental cause, for no victory of a higher civilization. It is a struggle for empire. Needless to say, Lord Salisbury thought the North should be defeated. So uh, Lord, Lord Salisbury, really didn't have a very high view of the democracy and thought America had proved that they were ineffective. And with regard to democracy, Lord Salisbury never relinquished his distrust in the form of government, especially with respect to America's execution of it. Democracy was a dangerous form of government because it was unbalanced, especially between the legislative and executive branches but the inability to reconcile majority and minority views with respect to protection and representation was another concern of his. Salisbury defined democracy as absolute government of the numerical majority. Internally, it produced long periods of apathy and short outbursts of feverish mob activity. And Lord Salisbury kind of work to diminish democracy, uh, especially in favor for Britain's parliamentary system. Now, in relation to how America saw the Civil War conflict, the South viewed the central government as tyrannical and their willingness to abolish slavery as infringing on their right of self-determination. The North viewed the South's insistence on preserving slavery as a stain to America's democratic reputation. But the succeeding from the Union was the fracturing of America's power both in that moment, but its future were, there to, were they to acquiesce. Lord Salisbury's view were in line with the South's interpretation of the North. Lincoln's war was no different from the one waged by the Tsar against Poland, whose national rising was drenched in blood. 
the methods by which Lincoln waged his imperialist war, imprisonment without trial, arbitrary power of conscription, a system of passports, unlimited discretion to declare martial law, were justified by Democrats on the worthless ground that that authority came from the ballot box. Um, what I find interesting is that in the past few decades, this, uh, Lord Salisbury's criticism of democracy are more apparent now than during the Civil War era. While learning more about Lord Salisbury and his views, I don't have a better understanding of, or we as a group don't have a better understanding of the Civil War. But I think I do see the validity of his arguments considering our political landscape today. So thank you for your time.